And today's topic is the right robot for your application. Yeah. And the question is then, why is choosing the correct robot for the application so important? Well, of course, the first answer to that question is quite obvious. If you choose a robot which is too small with too low payload, the robot will be overloaded. And first of all, that actually cancels the warranty. So even if the robot in practicality works, that cancels the warranty of the because it, but furthermore, it may also cause a breakdown sooner than any normal application would require would lead to. Or it might even in function at all, the position and the accuracy of the robots will not be able to handle the overloaded weight. And all that is pretty obvious for everyone. But it is actually also problematic to choose an overdimensioned robot. Out of several reasons as well, actually. Well, obviously a larger robot has a higher cost. But it's not only that. A larger robot is also typically a heavier robot. And that draws with it some side effects. Uh, a heavier robot will require a more robust foundation in its mounting, which at the end of the day costs money. It requires space, which might affect your application. But most of all, it also requires more energy when you start removing the robot and its load about. <clears throat> and therefore, it will generate a higher cost of ownership and a higher cost of operation over its total lifetime. So because of that, that is really important to see that you it's not so good idea to always overdimension the robot. And finally, of course, a larger robots typically has a higher spare part cost. The spare parts have a higher cost. Yes. So you see that just doing the easy way out and choosing a robot that is too big for the application is not always ideal either because you get some unwanted side effects out of it. So in our effort to digitalize much of our customer interface to do it more available to you as customers or integrators. We have now developed a new online tool which we code call KUKA Load, which is available directly on our page my.kuka. So you have to be registered to log on to it or if you don't want to go through my.kuka, it is also available under the web address load.kuka.com. But you still need to be registered at our my.kuka.com. There is a login, which is the same as for my.kuka. And we call it load analysis as a service. So before we actually demonstrate this to you, uh, let me just see what scenarios can we handle with this online software. Well, actually there are three scenarios we typically can handle with this, which is, I do have a robot, can it handle the load I'm thinking of? Or I have a product and an application, thereby a load. Can, which robot do I need to handle that robot? And finally, and perhaps equally important is that I have a robot and I have a load and I will want to actually document that this is a fit for as a part of my project and quality documentation. All this can be done with the tool KUKA load. So where did we come from? We have had a few solutions or offerings to this over the past year. And the oldest one and the one that's been around longest is a software which you download and install on your computer, which was called KUKA 
dot load, which was a PC application, which basically did the same that I described in these three scenarios I did, be, did before. And it was quite easy to use. It has been developed a long time over the year as looking to the positive sides of it, but it was or it is a PC software that has to be installed on your computer, which also means that theoretically, if you don't update it, it's not up to date with new robot models or new load datas. It can only be run, run on a PC and not any other platform. And if you don't have the PC available, you don't have it available. In parallel, a couple of years ago, we started a similar tool on our my.coca webpage, which was Compose, which actually later also changed name to Robot Selector, which was also quite good, but not as flexible and not as covering all these areas as Coca Load did. It was, of course, pretty easy interface to use. It was cloud-based. That meant that it, you could access it from everywhere, but you couldn't save your uh, calculations. The workflow wasn't always that intuitive. So thereby, we have now developed the new KUKA load online, and that will, during the year, totally replace it has already replaced the compose but it will also replace the old KUKA.load pc software that means that the pc software you have installed will disappear during the year and be completely replaced by our KUKA load online So let's have a look at the workflow as it is. And I'll just switch screens to share here and go over to my web browser. So I can either go into KUKA load through my.KUKA or I can in my web browser type in KUKA.load dot com and since i'm already logged in to my dot coca it will go directly to it but otherwise you have to log in as well now this is the page where we enter when we get into coca load and the first thing I'd like to point out, which is a new thing compared to the old Compose, is that there is now a load and save functionality. And typically in the project from the very beginning, you're not 100% sure about what the load is. You perhaps know what the load to handle is, but the tool is not as a bit unknown. So it's not really 100% known. That means that during the project, we will need to refine our data here to a load. And thereby, a load and save functionality is very useful because then we don't have to do all the entries again. And it is even so that if you have an older project in KUKA.load, it is possible to open saved projects from that environment here in KUKA Load Online. The next step we have to look at is is here is a selection part of the window. So we could set some limits in our criteria when it comes to what load we think we are going to handle. So let's say I think I'm going to handle something between 160 kilos and 280. That's a wide range, but anyway, or I can choose some reach of the robot. And there are a number of other criteria we could choose from. Like, for, and I can expand all these options here and say, okay, in this case, I'm not interested in foundry or any other special variants of the robots. I'm just interested in the standard robots, for example. 
So I'll just remove those filters there and the standard view. And as I change my criteria here, the selection of possible robots down here is changed. So then let's take a few of these robots. I will take, for example, this one. But let's take the two versions of the 210 robots as well. And just for the fun of it, let's take a 240 as well. So now I have selected four different robots, so I can actually analyze all these four at the same time. And the next part I need to put in is the load data. And let's play with the fact that we are quite early on the project right now. So we only guess that the load is round about 200 kilos. I can now actually already run the analysis of the load of this robot. And we will see the result of it shortly. It takes a few seconds. And here we get a graph of the four robots. And we actually see that all the four robots are approved for this application we've just put in, even the 180 kilo robot. And if we look a bit further down, we see the four graphs for the robot we've picked. We see, a, see where the center of our payload is. And right now we haven't put in an offset on this payload. So we are quite uncertain. So we are well within the limits of each robot. So if I go to the graph of each robot, we actually can see where is the maximum distance I can handle this load. So we see that this 200 kilo load can actually be handled by the 800, 180 kilo robot up to quite a big distance from the flange. We actually get the exact limits by following the curves like this. On the right hand side, we also get the static load on each axis for this application and each of the robots. So by highlighting each bar, we see which robot we are talking about. Equally important is, of course, also the dynamic load. And in this case, we are well within the dynamic limits. And therefore, all these are gray. That means that there are no warnings and no errors on this. We will now change the load data and make this a little bit tougher. So let's now assume that we now know a little bit more of the load. Well, one thing is that we probably are quite sure that the center of mass of our load is not directly at the flange, but offset from the flange in some distances. And we need to put some figures in here. And in the picture here on the left-hand side, we see what the distances are. So of course, on the z-axis, we have some offsets. Uh, on the y-axis, perhaps there is some offset in this case. And uh, let's do the same as a, a quite a larger offset on the x-axis like this. So right now, let's just rerun the analysis. And the analysis will now be updated with the new information we put in. And now we see the payload has moved from the Origo, but we are still well within the limits of this application. Now, what many people often forget to put in when they are thinking about loads is the inertia of the load. Depending on the physics of the load, it has different inertias. Inertia of a load can usually be calculated directly in the CAD program where the load has been designed. And we need to put in the mass inertia of the load here to do a proper calculation. Now, in earlier versions of KUKA load, we only had one format to put in inertia, but different CAD systems 
put out the inertia in different uh, formats. And it's, I'm glad to tell you that with the Puka online, we can actually put in the three most common formats of inertia to enter the load in Puka Syndrome. So we just put in what format we need. And in this case, let's just put in some inertia on this load and run the analysis again. Now we are actually adding the inertia, but the inertia in this case was quite low, so it didn't really change that much. We are still very good to go on the dynamic loads. As we now know, the project has developed a little bit further, and we know that the payload is usually handled as a tool and a payload. So what we actually can do now is to change the data and say that's okay. If we only look strictly at the tool, that is actually 100 kilos. And then we can add the payload, which is the payload that the tool will handle. And let's say that we discover that this is actually 130 kilos. And of course, that payload has an offset, just as the tool has itself. So let's just put in a few figures here out of, out of the air. And of course, that payload has a inertia as well. And as we've removed, some payload from the tool, probably the inertia goes down a little bit here. And that, what now happens is that KUKA load calculates the new combination of these two loads, and we can add as many loads as we like. I can give the load an additional name if I like. So it's clear to me later what the figures are, where the figures are coming from. Now re let's reload the analysis again. And have a look. And now we see we have the 180 kilo robot is at this point overloaded, both statically loaded and also dynamically overloaded. We see on axis two, there is an overload from a dynamic point of view. Uh, but still three of them are approved. Now we have forgotten one thing when it comes to payload, and that is that quite often we have loads sitting on the axis in forms of connection boxes or whatever. So in this case, let's add a load to I can choose what load we are talking about on axis three, two, and one, and also the energy supply if I like. But let's add a load on axis three. And I do that by just clicking on the plus sign and say we have a connection box here which weighs 15 kilos. And again, we have a central mass that we need to put in. And again, we have some pictures here on the left-hand side, which describes what distances are we talking about here. And the point is actually, the origo is actually here. So the center voice, so let's just say that in this case, there is not that much offset in terms of mass and in the center point of mass and the inertia is so low in this case since the load is so i think we can just skip that one rerun the analysis and now we see that actually two of the robots are overloaded 
So it is important to put in these extra loads as well. Because now we see that the 210 with a reach of 2,700 millimeters is actually overloaded, while the 210 with a reach of 3,100 millimeters is, is approved. Now, in, we in the beginning of this small had we chose these four different rulings. But let's say that, okay, I'm not that well versed in the product scope of Coca. Then I can actually, I don't need to choose a robot, or I can choose just one and say, okay, I have these two robots which I chose now. Is there any other robot that would fit my application? And therefore, there is a button in KUKA Load which says Add Recommended Robots. And the KUKA Load would then search its database and suggest any other robots that might fit this load application, which is what I now did. And it also suggested that, hey, there is another a 240 robot with a larger reach as well, which would fit this application. So now we got the three robots which we are interested in here. Uh, and so now we have the three options. And to me, it actually looks like the 240, 210 kilo with the reach of 3,100 millimeters perhaps is the robot I'm interested in. Uh, to be sure of this, I can now go to the information about this. And there are now two buttons here, which I can choose. So either is the marketplace, which will bring us into my Coca to that specific robot. And Just log in to my Coca. And it brings us directly to that exact robot where we can find the specifications and the description of that robot in terms of speed and reach. And there is also some documentation available to that. If you go to download, you can see the product data sheet. You can find links to CAD data and so on. Uh, there was also another bu button which was called and one more thing here. Now, if you're interested in this robot, there is actually a button which says request a quote. That means that there will be a mail to your contact at KUKA that you are interested in this robot and that you are want the price information on it. And it, you will then be contacted by our local sales representative. There is actually another button to this as well, and that is product information, which will take us directly into what we call the KUKA expert, which is our product information page where you can find support information. And here you find more detailed information around this robot. And as you see, it goes directly to that specific robot we have chosen in KUKA load. And we see the information here, the breakdown on the spare parts, which is available for this, or the spare part kits, the accuracy data, the forces you need to, when in the axles is handled, the flange loads, and so on. And on the right hand side, we see we can find all the downloads. Here is again the CAD data, for example. 
with the training documentation, the manuals for that robots. And again, data sheets and so on. So all the information available for that robot is available here at my quickly. And this is a really easy way to find your way into the both the MyCoca and the expert. Going from the robot here at Coca Load, either to marketplace or product information directly. And that will shorten your search time quite a lot. So finally now, we are now happy with the selection of the robot and we want to save it or export a documentation here. So we can either save it and create a new file. And in this case, we are only interested in one robot and we need to put in some information here about the, the project, of course, the load cases, which was created by me. Determination, yes, one tool only. And it will actually require a serial number, which I can just put in some demo value or put in some real value. If I like, I can then update this, open the file again and update with the real information, of course, at the end of the day, and just save this. The other version is, of course, for me to export this as a report in the same way. And in this case, I could just say that I am not really interested of bringing out the reports of the robots I'm not so interested of, only the one I'm going to choose. We put in the data earlier, so that's already saved here. And I can now export an acceptance report and add that to my project and quality documentations, or even perhaps if I'm making an offer to a customer to ensure, to show the customer that we have actually documented and tested this load case, this is the robot you are going to need. And we get a report which looks along these lines here with the data that it is approved in one page. It is an approval, we can assign this, that this data is correct and add it to our quality data. If you are an end customer, I would actually recommend that when a supplier brings a robot to you that you ask for this type of documentation, regardless of what brand the robot is from, because Sadly, we see too many applications where the robot is not ideal for the application. Industrial Intelligence.